think this is the uh, Paula Dean and. Uh, <laughs> um, what, what a great turnout! You guys are amazing. So I, I want to take a minute and start announcing our guests, and we'll get right out of the way. There's no reason I need to spend a lot of time up here. So um, first, I'd like to introduce Denise Crosby. Bring her up. say that he's been very supportive of our show here. Oh yeah, we got Brent up front here. I think Sorry. he's got a, okay, there we go. So we have a, we have a great guest coming, William Shatner. Cinema.com. All right, I'll turn the time over to who you're really here to see. Right here. Right here. I feel a little out of place here, but I'm sure we'll all feel at home very soon as this crazy cast gets rolling. Nice and loud, keep 
right close to the mic. Perfect. So, uh, two quick questions um, for you, Mr. Shatner. For me? Yeah. So, when you were here six months ago, yes. I asked you about the Big Bang Theory. Yeah. And you said that you mentioned on Twitter that uh, you were called the Fernandez of the show. I did. And what happens? Is there anything? He happen? said, I said, this is Shatner speaking. And he said, who? <laughs> It's not about the Big Bang Theory. It's about this wonderful cast. <laughs> they have so much to say, and they're so funny. They're so funny, they're going to knock you off your seat. They're just so funny and informative. You know, when I did Big Bang Theory... <laughs> to be on the show. I said, sure. <laughs> I don't know. Would you like me to call them for you? <laughs> I'll give you his number. Okay. You don't want to grovel. Grovel is bad. I know. I, I grovel. I didn't get on either. <laughs> Let's get another question. Uh, they're hidden over here. There's one right there. Hi. My name is Trisha, and I, the first movie I remember ever seeing in my life was a Star Trek movie, so I've been a fan since I was two, but... Is that Melissa? Since you were two. Trisha. My name is Trisha. Oh, <laughs> sorry. You look like right, Melissa. <laughs> my question is, I know that a lot of you were able to meet Gene Roddenberry before he passed, or maybe none of you, I don't know, but I would want to know if you were able to meet him before he passed away, what is the most memorable thing he told you about the Star Trek genre, universe, about the show? Okay, um, I'll start. I'll start because he cast us. Yeah, we were the last of the TNG cast, the last of Gene's children. Right, which is why... Which is why the shows that came after so, <laughs> okay, there, there, okay, there are ten Deep Sleep Nine fans in the audience, okay. Oh, oh man. You should hear what Jonathan calls it. Johnny, what do you call it? Deep Throat Nine. There you go. <laughs>
see because of these stupid consoles. So we're getting a move, all right? We're getting a move.
Desi was at the racetrack <laughs> one day. This is according to Dad. <laughs> Jonathan, let me go around here. Jonathan, what 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 did you cling to in uh, in the moments when uh, they were writing your character? What, what I had actually a very serious conversation with Gene many many times about the character of uh, Riker because unfortunately I had to audition seven times over six weeks. Nobody auditioned seven times. Seven times. <laughs> they continued. They wanted Billy Campbell to play the part, and it just didn't happen. But at any rate, Roddenberry said to me, not to, uh, it's hard to pop up around, obviously, so I tried to go in the other direction. He told me, in the 24th century, there will be no hunger, there will be no greed, and all of the children will know how to read. <laughs> Other than this larger-than-life personality that you brought to the role. I what you're talking about. <laughs> what did you bring? What did you see? What principle did you rely on as a core of your character? Uh, she had to be the opposite of Marina. <laughs> the total opposite of Marina. Because she was nice. <laughs> and sweet. <laughs> and understanding and, you know, cerebral. And I'm really the loud, obnoxious one, in real, as you know, in real life. And, um, so my thing, and, and I never discuss it, I mean, I tried to discuss it with Gene, but he did with me what he did with Michael, just go away and do whatever you want, you know, it's your character. Um, but uh, I realized that they thought I was a different person when they cast me, because I was so nervous. If they met the real me, I swear to God, I would not be sitting here today. <laughs> cruise, do you remember? On the Star Trek cruise, Denise, one of the first ones, well, one of the only ones we did, because the only escape is over the side, really. <laughs> On the Star Trek cruise. <laughs> Plus, you know, I was younger then, and I didn't mind being photographed in a bikini. Now, it ain't gonna happen. So, um, but no, but, you, but uh, what was I saying? Which one? <laughs> Um, someone asked Jean who had changed the most since they'd been cast, and he, without blinking, said Marina, because when we hired Marina, she was a little shy, retiring wallflower. <laughs> and I'm quoting now, wallflower. I was like, is there another Marina on the show that I don't know about? But yeah, um, honestly, the opposite to me, and that's what I had to stick to. And I tried to make her funny, and Jonathan would say, don't do that, she's not funny. <laughs> Got it. Got it. Yes. Um, well, I basically tried to make the doctor as much like the android as I could. I thought it would be and didn't know. I, I, Gene talked to me about, he wanted it to be very different from Bones. Although I did think it was interesting that it was Bones and then Crush It, but whatever. <laughs> um, but I talked to him about Dr. Oliver Sacks, because I was a big fan of Dr. Sacks' books and his, uh, all of the work he had done in the medical field in terms of uh, neurology. And um, he was very much wanting to show a strong female character, and he talked about it as not only was she the, the doctor, chief medical officer, but she was the one who could say to Picard, you know, you're too mentally ill to drive this ship. <laughs> <laughs> Which I tried to say all the time. You, you have no idea. But the other thing was is that she was a mother, and I think that was a big thing in his life because he uh, had had a son at that by that time, and he, he was very... He said he had really changed by having um, Rod, and, and so I think he wanted to have 
all ages on the ship. I mean, I, I always thought we could have had more uh, to do with like senior citizens on the ship, but it was great to have somebody who actually was doing what most of this country does, which is having a working mom. And you know, I, I thought it, um, as well as just someone who was so unbelievably hot. You know. Woo! I think the, the probably the primary thing I tried to do was make Tasha as inappropriate as I could <laughs> on any given moment. I was always looking for some way to make her um, either vulnerable or just not quite appropriate. So whenever I could, I could. It wasn't a lot, but you know, there weren't a lot of moments of that, but whenever I could find it, I would I would just, you know, aim for that. Because I, I felt that Tasha had this part of her that was deeply um, insecure about being there, and that is triggered by a scene that Marina and I had for audition piece that was never filmed. And um, it, it sort of clued me into this character, and it, I just thought it would be much more interesting to play her that way. Anyway. Let's go to another question. Question over here? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I got more of a statement than a question. Um, I need to Can we turn the statement into a question? You know what? I, mean, um, I need to personally thank every single one of you on stage. I speak for everyone in this room. You have touched my life in a way you've been gone. For real, not that crap you hear about. And I will tell you, the thing that has pulled me from my darkest of darkest of craziest places has been this cast right here. I've been, uh, wow, feet. I, 
I've been in front of an audience uh, for many years and doing this, this probably is the most uh, most emotional moment I've ever been connected. Um, you, you know, uh, these young men have come back from the wars with wounds that we can't see and more wounds that we can see. We have no idea what, what they go through, and for a moment here, we, we, we have a small insight into the sacrifices that these kids make for this country. It's just this is We should send all of our kids when they're 14 to, to do a week uh, with the military because you learn so well. I, I'm not talking about the wars, but just the understanding of the situations people were in and uh, the, just the troops from all over the world in, in Bosnia and, and the things that, that people do on our behalf. So uh, whether we agree with the wars or not, there's other ways to handle it. But the soldiers, you know, thank you. celebration of his life, of his sacrifice, but it's also a celebration of Star Trek. So we'll continue on and um, and it is part of the part of the show. Uh, part of what makes Star Trek Star Trek. What's your question? Hi, Mr. Chapman. My name right, is right Ashley. Right into the microphone I'm nice and loud. My name is Ashley and first I'd like to thank all our veterans and if I could stop crying my uh, little brother is currently in active duty in the Army, and um, he wanted to be here, but he couldn't because of that. Um, but he loves Star Trek just as much as I do. And my question was, um, for all of you, is what was your favorite episodes that you performed in and why? favorite episode? Well, I'll start. Uh, I, have, I have two that uh, I wasn't, I, well, one I was kind of in a lot, but the other one I wasn't was uh, uh, where Dana builds the child called The Offspring. And the second one that they're tied for is uh, the drum head. Yeah. Which, by the way, Episodes were directed by Johnny Franks. <laughs> Two of my favorites. <laughs> um, I didn't like any of the Wharf episodes. <laughs> Uh, no, you know what? I, I, it's hard for me to. Yeah, let's get them out of the way. Let's just do one. You know what? We were um, we were working so hard back then. I mean, you know, comparatively, there's work and there's work. But we did a lot of hours, and uh, it's hard for me to to really think of what my favorite episode was because. It seemed to me we did one long episode that was seven years long. And, um, but the only thing I can, I can really say is, is somewhere in that seven years, I remember being really 
fond of the episodes that starred the character Data. <laughs> I just love the guy. <laughs> but Johnny? I think the best television we ever made was the uh, best of both worlds, parts one and two. gracious I am. Um, one was, uh, what was it called? <laughs> Measure of a Man. Oh, yeah. Measure of a Man. <laughs> big data episode, yeah, big data episode. And then I also really enjoyed, for just fun reasons, Fistful of Datas. <laughs> it was fun to do a cowboy episode and go to a different studio and, you know, dress up in not a spacesuit. You know. <laughs> um, I, I too thought that the introduction of the Borg was pretty amazing. I also loved the episode, and I wasn't in it much, but I loved the idea behind First Contact, and then later it became a movie. I, I'm really big into the old Prime Directive. I, I really like that whole philosophy. Um, and then in terms of just... Uh, Fun. It was really fun to do. Remember me, and uh, and anytime there was any minute moment of comedy in one of the most serious characters, at like Data's Day or being able to do, um, you know, the tap dance or do any comedy in um, in what was the what's it called, the Big Goodbye. The Big Goodbye was really a lot of fun too. I still think that Code of Honor was pretty good television writing right there. I, 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 you know, I, I really do love that episode. Um, for, very, for so many reasons, you know. So, I, I mean, the costumes alone were, were, were fabulous, you know. Bill Tice had a way with fabric and color. And, you know, and, and, the, and the forward thinking. The progressive, um, progressive thought. thinking. You and I, you remember those conversations we would have and sarcastic. how incredible. It, it, sparked, it sparked so many conversations about deep, race. Deep and racially exactly. advanced, and, very and, progressive. And, you know, the, very the progressive. objectification of women and was so cool. I know, I know. And I, 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 I really can't choose one. All seven years were so wonderful. Why don't, you, why don't you tell them what you told Whoopi in the, uh, when we did the Captain I've never song. seen an episode of, uh, what's the name of the show again? The one that came after your show. The one that came after your show. The one that came after Next question! Hi, guys. Uh, my name is Andrew. Uh, what is the moment that resonated with you most on TNG? Resonation. That's not a word. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's a no, it's an earthquake. We had an earthquake and I was in my trailer, and I mean, there was a lot of things resonating. <laughs> I actually, you know, it was like, you know, I, the very first season when we were in this stupid, crappy, pardon me, we junky kind of little caravans, I had never been in California, I'd never known what an earthquake was. I thought it was you two pushing <laughs> and I come walking out, come on you guys, I'm putting on, and, and it was like, everyone's going, it's an earthquake, and I was like, terrified, but you know, anyway. That's a start. Well, that resonates. <laughs> uh, anybody else got a feeling about that? Speaking of you got earthquake, nothing, you got got nothing. John, you got, you, Jonathan you, was, was in his... In his uh, trailer, in the makeup trailer with me during that earthquake, do you remember? Wait a minute, you were in his trailer? And <laughs> 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 that, that resonated, does that resonate? That resonates. That was during the period where Denise was trying to steal my pink chenille 
bathrobe. Johnny was in his women's, women's pink chenille bathrobe. Was it was cute. Three sizes, bag. three sizes too small. It looked much better on you. <laughs> and he had a full remember that dress that J-Lo wore? You remember to the, what did you to the, yeah. remember when it was cut down to a night like, Remember? Yeah. She was wearing two strips. That's what Johnny looked like in the fashion. <laughs> there was shaving cream all over his face. Remember those days? So fun. It resonated for all of us. You guys are looking, you guys are looking very fondly at each other. Like old fondly. time sake. We danced. We danced. In, in we sang. We were young dance and beautiful. Of love. We did uh, we like what we like to call the jelly roll. Really? The two of you did the jelly roll. Just before or after lunch? Uh, next question. Well, I have one tiny question. Right into, right into that mic, man. One tiny question. I really like Jonathan. No, make it a one big question. <laughs> I'd love Jonathan Franks to step over the chair to sit. <laughs> What's your question? My question is, if they were to reboot TGN, who would you, each of you, like to play you in a reboot? All right. TNG, you mean TNG, I'm assuming. <laughs> TGN is the wrestling, right? TNG is wrestling. <laughs> TGN, the role of Commander William T. Riker will be played by Will we? would do a heck of a lot of plastic surgery and I could play it myself. Michael Darn. Well, it could be anybody really under that makeup, couldn't it, really? Oh, 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 oh